Okay, welcome everybody here to Twitch chat, everybody on YouTube. As you can see, we are in the middle of a match. We're playing some Abzan Hero right now, and we had we had some technical difficulties. Um, I had the bitrate too high. I changed it today. I thought I thought my computer could handle it, but unfortunately, my uh, it looks like my internet service provider was not able to handle that high of a bitrate. And so we had some frame issues for the stream. It looked good on my end, like nothing changed on my end, but I guess everybody on the stream said that there was, they were having a bunch of issues. And so we had to stop it. So we're just, we were just nine minutes in. So sorry you missed the introduction about the deck. Um, unfortunately, I'll, I'll do that again after this match. I'll talk about it. But we are, we are in the very first match here with Abzan Hero against... Uh, Jeskai Fires, as you can see. We're in the first game, so you, you haven't missed the game. We're on, what, turn 7 right now. And you, as you, you just saw the last turn. So you just missed the first five turns of the game. We did get to have both of our Disparks in our hand, which helped. Uh, one, one Fires of Invention is gone. Um, you cannot run or hide. I don't think I, I don't really want to minus the Soren because I want to be able to just have this Knight of Autumn in the chamber in case there is another. Yeah, give me that. I need to draw cards. Hmm. In case there is another Fires of Invention. Ethergus the Kethis. Unfortunately, I think I just would rather have the Golgari Queen. Yeah, I mean, if it's a if they have yet another Clarion, that's going to be rough for me. They've had two so far. But yeah, if they have another one, obviously it's going to be really rough for me. Okay, they do have another one. So they're going to be killing the Garrick, I assume. Our Soren can bring back the hero. So I just lowered the bitrate from 4,500 to 3,500, and I lowered the frames per second from 60 to 30, like how we had 30 yesterday. Um, so now for y'all, how how's the stream running now? Okay, it's good now. Cool. How many lands we got over here? One, two... Two.
Hopefully they're out of Clarions. <laughs> Not out of Cavalier Gales, though. Gosh, that's a, that's a difficult card to deal with. I want them to attack with Cavalier Flame. That would be good for me. Ooh. They're not attacking with Cavalier Flame. I mean, well, they're not they're not attacking with any of the like. I'm just kind of surprised they're not attacking with both Cavaliers. I guess they're gonna play some more defense. Hey, Eddie. On what's about to happen. Fortunately, I'm getting rid of the Soren. He's Ether Gus. Wasn't really expecting them to have. Instant speed interaction, to be honest. Yeah, that was their second Aether Gust that, that hurt quite a bit. So I play two spells, I can't play another one. All we have to do is protect Golgari Queen. They need to attack Golgari Queen with both Cavaliers. In the air. Aw, oh, thank you so much there, Santa Paul. Santa Paul gifting out the sub. There's my Santa emote. There we go. So yeah, they just went all, all in there. I just shocked. So you think they would realize that I, I probably shocked for a reason. Paul gets out another one. Concrete... Shelter. Did y'all see? Okay, there is, okay. I was gonna ask if there was a sub notification. Orn, getting the gift sub. Thank you so much there, Paul. That gets us to 10. Uh, looks like I was one behind anyway, so that gets us to our 10th sub of the day. We hit a sub goal. All right, we're bringing in extra Disparks. 
extra trophy. So with that sub goal, we are going to be doing a 12 hour stream. All right, unlocking that 12 hour stream. Thank you so much there, Paul. All right, we got a lot of good things that kill the kill fires of invention. I'm going to take out Tulsimers. The best thing Tulsimer is, it's a legendary card for Kethis, as we saw there. We'll take out Oath of Kaya. Legion Zen can go. Kind of want to play these Duresses. But I also kind of like all these cards. I mean, I guess Golgari Queen, maybe, maybe we don't need all these Golgari Queens, actually. Play a duress there. Because there's times that they just have, like, duress whiffs. You know, like they just have all their huge creatures. Maybe we just play a Kai's Wrath, actually. That can destroy a few big creatures. I like that. Let's play a Kai's Wrath. All right, let's do that. All right, let's update... Let's update our our uh, twelve hour stream goals. So yeah, how how the if you're kind of newer to the channel, how it works is each ten if we hit ten subs during a stream, or each ten subs that we hit during a stream, um, that's one sub goal. And then whenever we hit twenty sub goals, we're doing a twelve hour stream. So we'll probably do one this weekend. Uh, Kitty Cat is, you can't really see him, but he's asleep back there. He's asleep on the couch. So would y'all rather have a 12-hour stream on Saturday or Sunday? Today's Friday. Ooh, the old Basic Forest Kaya's Wrath deck. It's a classic. I probably shouldn't be keeping this. I don't know, my opponent mulliganed, but now they just decided to keep mulliganing. Saturday? <laughs> yeah, the the doggos and the and the cat, um, they, yeah, they kind of stay separate. Hawkeye is a scaredy cat. He's he's too scared of of everything. So, this is Hawkeye's room. The the dog stay in the, the living room. This is a pretty sweet curve. Kethis into Ken Kenrith. The old Kethis into Kenrith curve. We should probably use this Fable Passage before we don't have any more basics. <laughs> That'd be not good to draw the last basic before we play that. Alright, they get that scry too. And we're just 
trying to race. Ooh, that hurts. That definitely hurt. Yeah, that hurt. Yeah, Sunday's football day, so I should do 12-hour stream Saturday. Makes sense. Yeah, and Kenda said Saturday, too. I wonder if they're going to have counter magic here since they didn't tap out. I don't know. That's probably me being too scared. I know my responsibility. Trust me, I have a plan. They did. It was just either gust though. Yeah, five color Niv Mizza deck is, is pretty spicy. Spicing it up there. No fires of invention with that five color Niv Mizza deck. We're going. We're going full on. I've got it. Um, all the gold cards. Fires. Or not fired, but Niv Niv Mizzet Reborn. You messed with the wrong woodsman. Hey Zappa, happy Friday. Ugh. I was hoping they didn't have a haste creature this turn. Like it was basically they needed Kenrith. I was really hoping they didn't, and I could I could untap trophy the Teferi and then hold up instant speed removal. Like you know, they needed it this turn to kill the Garrick. Don't worry, I got this. I'll just use the Kai's Wrath now, though. Now that we won't be able to protect a Garrick. This might be a bad idea. And it's a pretty even game here for them mold to five. Their deck's done a really good job of drawing more cards. Mold of four, right, mold of four. I feel like I've killed a ton of cavaliers. Of Gales, that is. So we make their the trigger a little bit worse by killing it in response because they don't get to shuffle they don't get to put two cards back and then shuffle them away. Yeah, they're they're actually three cards deeper in their deck than what I am. After they mold the four. This isn't a fight you can win. Oh, I've done the hero thing before.
They still got to shuffle them, though. With the Fable Passage. So maybe I should be trophying the... To fairy so I can have instant speed removal. Like if they had a fires, definitely would want that. Hmm. That was a good turn. I feel like I should take advantage of this while I can before Kethos dies. Even though this means that Garrick dies. Looks like you're not fit to survive. Alright, gonna finally exile this thing instead of kill it again for the fourth time. Yeah, I went with the Garrick over the Ugin because it could draw. It draws because it drew me a card. But yeah, I guess they could have had an Ethergust for it. No, the battle pass ends like the master pass ends like the end of the or like whenever basically the whenever Theros enters the mastery pass is over. So like the day before Theros enters is whenever the mastery pass ends, as far as I know. And then the seasons are by months. So I can't really attack with the 1-1 because if they have Aether Gust for the Garrick, the or you know, like if they would have, you know, or negate or whatever, they would have countered Garrick and then untap and had the Red Cavalier with haste. I'm dead, so I have to leave the 1-1 back. So many of these Cavalier of Gales. So I, 
so when did they say that i think what did they say like the 16th of january is whenever theros beyond death enters so so then like the 15th will be the last day for the mastery pass i think yeah i think that's the fifth cavalier gales so many of those All right, I have instant speed removal right now. They kept both on top. I was I was thinking about like trophying like a white source. I could trophy both white sources. I don't know, like make them shuffle. It's probably just not the thing to do though. I'm just playing Kethis so I can hold up both trophies though. And I wanted to play Kethis because of Clarion. I didn't want to play these things that also died to Clarion like the rest of my cards. That's their, is that their sixth Cavalier of Gales they played? Or am I one off? I think I think that may be their sixth. Okay. Yeah, that was a crazy game. That was a crazy match. I can update this, update this. Because, yeah, they mulled the four, and I, yeah, I definitely had a pretty good draws, and they, yeah, they were in there the whole time. That time wipe that they had was really what, you know, let them stabilize, and then, and then we, then, you know, we played on from there. Anyway, I guess to talk about the deck, because I talked about this for a little while, but that all got um, erased, unfortunately, with the new recording. So I'll kind of do it a little bit faster here. Uh, if you're someone who doesn't like the talking about the deck, you can fast forward to the next game if you're watching on YouTube. But the reason why um, uh, I wanted to play Abzan Hero here is because yesterday, as you know, I took a couple of days off um, with, from streaming to build a new PC and everything. And then yesterday, um, we played against a whole lot of John Sacrifice. Last weekend, John Sacrifice won the Mythic Championship tournament and we played against that winning champ the winning mythic championship deck a lot yesterday and we we played against it the first time today and so i today like whenever i was i was putting decks together i wanted to play stuff that um had some good tools to fight the john sacrifice deck and that's what led me to um really to vrasco golgari queen i really like this this planeswalker with the minus three ability it's just really versatile being able to destroy so much different stuff and so i, I really wanted to play golgari queen um, i thought about playing like a soul tie deck with um like soul tie control with like four growth spiral four thought erasure and then kefnet golgari queen and and you know like other spells for kefnet but it, golgari queen didn't really seem that good though in the deck because we didn't get to really use the plus two ability we didn't have permanents that you'd want to sacrifice because in a deck like that you really don't want to sacrifice your lands and so there weren't really permanent so it just like it was like a four mana abrupt decay basically so i wanted to do some wanted to play a deck with creatures where we wouldn't mind sacrificing them and of course that that got us to hero precinct one and and you know i've played abzan hero before I've played like this deck before but i've updated it to for the current metagame um because this, because hero makes like those extra tokens that you really don't mind sacrificing to be able to help you draw more cards. But you can see here I'm playing more Mortifies because Mortify can destroy Trail of Crumbs. Trail of Crumbs is just a, a card that you really need to get rid of. And then of course, as we saw there with Fires of Invention as well. Um, but then this deck of course has like Knight of Autumns also to destroy Trail of Crumbs and Witches Ovens. And then sideboard, I don't think that I don't think this is really necessary in the main deck because it's not good against a lot of decks. But sideboard Kaya 
Kaya is kind of perfect against that that deck, exiling um, Witches Oven, exiling Gilded Goose, exiling um, Cauldron Familiar. So I really liked really like Kaya in here too. I remember the last time we played it, Kenrith looked pretty good, so we I put in a second Kenrith instead of the Tristani that was in the main, but I still want the Tristani because of like the Agent of Treachery decks, and then also just against the aggro decks, you can play a Tristani over there. And then I have an extra six mana walker. We have an extra Ugin in here. Uh, before we had, you know, like some Bell Haunts and Seraph of the Scales that were never they were okay, but never that spectacular. And I kind of went away from them. Went extra Midnight Reaper, extra Paradise Druid from last time. And then extra top end card with Ugin being able to uh, destroy Trail of Crumbs or anything like that also. Um, and then because Golgari, I really like Golgari Queen right now, we had two Soren, two Queen. But we're going with three Queen, one Soren now. Um, yeah, Tuls yeah, Tulsimer, uh I mean, Tulsimer is very, you know, it kills, like it helps you stabilize. Um it's yeah, it's possible. It, it's definitely one of the weaker cards in the main deck. But the thing is, the Tulsimer Garrick synergy is just incredible, and so you know we have two two Tulsimer, two Garrick. That synergy is just is just really really powerful. But yeah, there's there's still a lot of small creature decks, and still like even against the the oven decks, like killing stuff like Gilded Goose and, and things like that. Like getting rid of Gilded Goose and Mayhem Devil, and those kind of cards are really important to be able to get rid of. So yeah, so the, the after party event, yeah, it's you just get packs. There's no there's no um, there's no entry fee. It's a free event, and you you just you win three games and you get three for each game you win. You get a Theros pack for whenever Theros releases. Nice, you got to 260 life with Fire Song and Sunspeaker in Commander. Awesome. Blue White Control. Normally I'd want to put a land to the bottom, but Castle Arden Vale is going to be the exception yeah will be the exception oh the Kaya can kill <clears throat> um, a Teferi the minuses can kill a brazen borrower can kill a Gadwick Yeah, Cerebus, get him. Get him. They're countering our spells. Not cool. Unfortunately, with keeping that castle Arden Vale, though, we have just drawn other green black lands from here, so we're not going to. We're not. We're not Able to activate the Arden Veil. Yeah, get him. Yeah, Soren plus Arcane Adaptation in Historic, and then play Agent of Treacheries. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, Soren's not really doing anything. Basically getting cards out of our hand to make Castle Lock Train better. Bye.
I know the, the last time I played against this deck, Planar Cleansing was the card that I really struggled against. <laughs> what a mess I've made. There you go, yeah, Arcane Adaptation, Liliana's Contract. That's always pretty sweet. Not a land, but I don't know. I don't. I don't really have great draws. So basically, I don't really want to play Garrett because even if it resolves, if it resolves. That means they probably have Planar Cleansing. I mean, I, d I don't think we can really win this game from here with with this kind of start with this position that my opponent's at with just seven cards, easily keeping stuff on top. Having both these castles, me having not too much. Yeah, they're in control. This is a tough card to beat. It's a good one. So they can't just use Castle to make one blocker to save Teferi. Basically, infinite life now. <clears throat> this curse. This... <laughs> you cannot run or hide. So I can either activate White Castle or Black Castle. I think I should probably just start activating Black Castle. Here we go. Hey, corn lover. Yep, good to be back. Um, we are 
yeah, we're... F basically, we've been playing for... Yeah, we've basically been playing for 50 minutes in this league. Uh, yeah, last match was was long. Two cards. Go ahead. Beg from the It's not often I'm outmaneuvered. Cry. Keep. These brazen borrowers are probably going to do a pretty good job of killing my planeswalkers. As long as they don't draw like a, you know, like a Gadwick or, or a Finale or, you know, something that can draw them tons of cards. We should be able to outgrind a couple of 3-1s with Lock Twain. Well, it looks like they have good stuff coming, though. Let's grind them both to the top. We'll play this card they know about. Yep. Not too surprised there. I don't mind blue eye control. I don't mind this deck. This is the one card I, I don't really like, planar cleansing. That's the one card I'm That's not my favorite. Basically because it you know, wrecks my D Demir Affinity Forge deck that we were just playing. Just got wrecked by Planar Cleansing. You know, like, we're trying to do all this cool stuff, play all these. You know, have all this cool synergy between these artifacts and Planeswalkers. And Planar Cleansing is just devastating. My, actual, my, my least favorite deck is actually Team or Adventure. We were talking about that a little bit ago. That's my least favorite deck in standard right now. I think it's just, just very cookie cutter. Just put all the adventure stuff together. They're all two for ones. And then with Lucky Clover, just even more. You just get a bunch of mana. It's just just a Watsy pre-con deck. Of just, oh, cool. We'll put all the things that say adventure together. 
And they always have infinite cards because every single card's a two for one. The more I'm playing with them, the more I don't really like the adventure cards. So I got one Citadel. Got all these duresses, of course. Like we saw those adventure cards were awesome there, the Brazen Barbers. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind Cauldron Familiar, which is oven whatsoever. Uh, a lot of people don't like don't like that. I don't mind it whatsoever. I think that can can make for some, uh, you know, decisions on like when to to do stuff and everything. I, I think that's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's the same thing they did with M20. Yeah, they just made the M20 elemental deck, you know, just, and now the adventure. But yeah, all the adventure cards are just two for ones, and then they just gave them, like, uh, Edgewall Innkeeper and Lucky Clover, which are just really, really powerful. And so I don't know. I don't, I don't like that deck too much. You love the design of the adventure cards? I like the flavor of the adventure cards. I think the flavor is really good. As far as the design, I think they pushed them a little too far. I think it's... I mean, when you just think of, like, just a, a card that's just, you know, like a regular card, then, a, then another card that's it's two cards, and both cards are very solid playable. I think it's just kind of pushed too far. But yeah, maybe, maybe they didn't give him an engine. You know, maybe there wasn't Lucky Clover or Edgewall Innkeeper. I mean, they're they're all just completely playable without those anyway. Yeah, I could see adventure being good in in limited as well. So I guess more of my complaint for anything else is Because they're already really powerful two two for one cards. They don't need the engine cards like Innkeeper and Lucky Clover also. And just the the teamer adventure deck as a whole, it's just a Eldrain precon deck. You just put all the adventure cards together. You have your deck. I I never really liked those kind of decks. I think it's kind of boring to just have all the cards from one set that you just they all just basically build a deck for you. I like stuff like this. Just kind of combine lots of random-ish stuff from different sets and kind of, you know, find your find your own synergies and build, build your own deck and stuff like that.
<laughs> yeah, random ish stuff. That's myself. I I don't I don't think it's wrong if you don't have like if you don't share the same opinion. Like that's just an opinion. It's all. Yeah, that's just me. I'm glad they didn't either guys to cat, cat this. Could have time wipe here, but you know if they do have it, and I don't have my Midnight Reaper in play to help protect. But you know if they do have time wipe, then we have the Liliana to finish. But I think we need to get the Tulsimer to, because otherwise we're not really winning the race. You know, like how we were at ten, they were gonna have six power there. We need that Tulsimer to help us win the race, so the Brazen Borrowers don't just kill us. I mean, they only have one card in hand, though. Hmm. That was really nice, though, having two mana veto and then four extra mana for Castle. That worked out pretty well for them, but um, still didn't quite find the time wipe. Good for me. All right, I'm going to take out the trophies on the draw. Get. I was kind of thinking like a long game, maybe I could tr trophy like castles. But no, I don't think I'm going to use a card for that. We'll have another Paradise Druid on the draw to help us help speed us up a little bit. And then a Golgari Queen, as we saw, like the Brazen Borrowers and the you know, Because Brazen Borrower, Gadwick, Teferi, those are all things that we can go kill with Golgari Queen. All right, we got a gold hand. We got two very gold-centric decks back to back. Show remorse. I'll show you straight. This might be a bad idea. Hmm. That's more like it. No, 
I am not making this up as I go. Oh, I... I definitely wanted to play Tulsimer there and just have two creatures in play. But I didn't have the double green to actually cast it. Oh, well, I guess the token would have just got bounced by Teferi. Yeah, Ceratops could definitely be a sideboard card. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of Gadwick counterspell decks right now. <clears throat> Definitely missing Veil of Summer. Still have eight cards over there because borrower counts as a card. And I got two. I got eight. I'll protect you. Hey, what's up, Adurial? Thanks for the resub. Six months. That is great. Thank you so much, Adurial. I should play the cut this first. Oh, yeah, I don't have the green mana for cut this first. GG's. The the borrowers are gonna kill me. Oh whoops. Veil of Summer. Where are you at? I need Veil of Summer. Why couldn't they make you a reasonable card and just cost two mana and then not draw a card? And then we could actually have you in the format, instead of you being banned. I'm gonna just be like all the other in the cycle and cost two and not draw a card. Yeah, I could have told Summer the turn before to kill the Gadwick. I was... Yeah, I mean, obviously for how that played out, I wish I would have done that. For how how that game turned out, um, so it's a problem with turn one temples.
could help the life loss from Shockland Midnight Reaper. I'm glad we kept it. We have not faced John's Sacrifice at all. Unfortunately. It's a deck I really wanted to play against. Three mana, five five draw card that also already made a one one. Our last two opponents with Gadwick and now Edgewall Innkeeper. They do have a lot more card advantage than we got. It does make sense for me last match talking about how my least favorite least favorite cards in standard are these adventure cards, and obviously we're gonna just play against Adventure the very next match. I should have said my least favorite is Jun Sacrifice, so we could have played against that. Gain the four life with the Night of Autumn, because of course these Midnight Reapers are going to be hurting us. And if I would have made it a 4-3, it still would have just traded with a Midnight Reaper to kill a Lovestruck Beast anyway. cards. Those are good cards. It is pretty brutal that we have to kill the one drop with this flyer that's going to kill my planeswalker, the midnight reaper in play. We have to kill the one drop. <laughs> uh. 
<laughs> we can can never kill our cards. The Order of Midnight, Edgewell, and Keeper combo. Uh, hopefully, this, hopefully Kaya does some good work for us after sideboard. Um, being able to exile innkeepers or you know exile stuff in the graveyard to try to hold hold back Order of Midnight. Hopefully. Good. <laughs> hey, ultimate. Awesome. Glad you're back. Yep, it's the beginning of the weekend. Yeah, thanks, thanks y'all for stick for staying up, staying up late. Never-ending cycle. This card Gravedigger, right? Yeah. So we need to give Grave Gravedigger flying. But then also have it draw another card. Thanks, Azerloth. Azeroth? We'll go Azeroth. That's probably it. Yeah, they could. They definitely could have done a lot better with Throne of Eldraine. Hopefully, Theros is better. But yeah, with you know Oko once upon a time and Innkeeper, everything that certainly could have done better. And then, yeah, I know a lot of people don't like Cauldron Familiar. Yeah, we need the, the Exile cards in this matchup. We need Legion's End. To exile these things. Sometimes sacrifice. We did get to untap with Tulsmer and have Garrick. We get we get to have some fun here. 
not run or hide. Hopefully we can keep Garrick alive. All right. They must not. Have, they must. Must have never drawn their murderous riders. All right. So we got two Legion's End and two Kaya Orzov Usurper. As far as exiling goes. Uh, yeah, we won. Yeah, they must have had all lands or something. Hmm. If we play the Kaya's Rats also... Do I even want to spark? I probably want to spark. Like, they probably have. Yeah, I want to spark. You know, Questing Beast, Vivian, Greyhenge. Maybe just one to spark. I don't really have too many answers to the Great Henge right now, though. With take with taking out Knight of Autumns, that could be a problematic card. All right, just one to spark. Oh, awesome, Azraeleth. No, I, I don't know. Like, I, I saw the deck list and everything. I didn't watch the Mythic Championship. You know, with streaming and stuff, I saw all the deck lists. But cool, yeah, what do you like about that Golgari deck? So they mold to five? That's okay. They'll... They'll be back to having 20 cards in no time. Hey, Johnny Pot Pie, tier two sub again, 10 months. Thank you so much there. You're 1% of the way to my thousand month anniversary. <laughs> Thanks for sharing your time and expertise with us MTG nerds. Have a great holiday season. Thank you so much, Johnny Pot Pie. Hope you have a wonderful holiday season as well. And that is sub number 12. I was one behind there. Yeah, yeah, I do need to make a Vivian's Arcbow deck. I know, I was... I was certainly thinking about making a Vivian's Arcbow deck. Um, for today, we kind of, you know, settled on these decks instead. Um, but yeah, I was, I was kind of looking into that. Hey! There you go. And now Johnny Popeye gifting out five subs as well. Thank you, Johnny Popeye.
And Kyle's getting that resub. Go on Twitch Prime. Thanks, Yen Code. And yeah, thanks. Thank you so much, Johnny Popeye. So yeah, for those of y'all also just joining us, we we did with the sub goal today. We did hit enough for a 12-hour stream, and I I guess we're probably doing that tomorrow. Yeah, so I think we're probably just doing the 12-hour stream tomorrow. Which I should have. So that's two and one. We'll play one more. Which I should probably have written down here. Um. Noon to midnight Eastern. So yeah, we're doing we're doing our twelve hour stream tomorrow because we hit enough sub goals today. Um. Ask Chad if they want to do tomorrow or Sunday. People want to do tomorrow, Sunday being football day in America. <laughs> no, that's just that's the one hype vehicle, just the hype boat. Anomander Resubbing three awesome months. Thank you so much, Anomander. That gets us to 19 and and so yeah, basically now we're just kind of working towards sub goals towards the next 12 hour stream. After this. Okay. Rawr, 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 rawr. Castle Lock Twain. Ooh, I got a Castle Lock Twain. We have five lands, though, so we'll put that to the bottom. Well, Stormfist Crusader is going to give them their enough cards to get back in here. They did mold a five. Ow. Hmm. Even though I'm taking a hit for seven here, I think getting rid of the thing that gives them a lot of cards is the way to go and you know rotting registor is just gonna make them discard cards we'll mortify this next turn All right, that thing's out of here. They discarded the Oath Sworn Knight, which is perfect for me because we have Dispark. So that worked out. I could have just Ugin and killed the thing too, but Dispark doesn't hit very much stuff in their deck, so I want to just hit the. Th I would just want to get rid of the thing that Dispark can get rid of. Protection from multicolor is awesome against my deck. Good thing I added in this random... Oh wait! This doesn't actually kill it. Hmm. Right, because it's not a color. I forgot that actually that has to be a color. 
for that to kill. I guess I should have shocked and kept the Paradise Druid untapped. The best play, even though it's not the best play at protecting Ugin, but I think the best play is just to get ag aggressive with all this stuff because they they attack Ugin, they die. Yeah. So Ugin's minus says destroy target permanent that's one or more colors. Um, but the Stone Coil Serpent is not one or more colors. It it is colorless. So the spark's basically just for one card. I mean, they could be playing Rankle. Could be for two cards. I want to... I mean, all these f these five mana cards are all pretty good against aggro. Like, they all have a good amount of life gain. I need to get rid of, like, two of these six drops. Um, Which I guess is Ugin and... Garrick. And then I kind of want to get rid of Soren. Yeah, I'm just going to get rid of Soren. Thanks, Oak and Shade. Yeah. Yeah, I got a new computer yesterday. It was the first day Ultimate Knuckle. So, yeah, stream's more crisp and shouldn't have lag issues or things like that anymore, hopefully. Yeah, they probably probably have some rankle. <laughs> yeah, hooray, no lag. Allegedly. Yesterday we didn't have lag problems, but then I tried I tried messing with the the FPS and bitrate numbers today and then it had problems whenever I was uploading also. So I think that was that was on my just, you know, internet problems, not really the No, it wasn't really the computer's fault. And so I had to bump Stop the stream, bump those numbers down again. My opponent mold to five again? It's unfortunate for them. Yeah, PC building experience went, went very well. I guess I just take the one damage. You know, it's like Rimrock Knight is like the only reason not to block. It's basically just Rimrock Knight. I don't know why they would attack if they didn't have that. That does keep them from playing something like a Rotting Regisaur, though, I suppose. There's not really a reason to risk it. Oh, Paragon? Yeah, it could be Blacklands Paragon tr too. That's that's true. Yeah, it's a good one. That'd be even better. I forgot about Paragon. No, so the YouTube video, it takes a while. Whenever you upload a YouTube video, it doesn't just it's not just 1080p immediately it takes a little while to to fully 
um, upload and everything and, and change. So, like, it's... Yeah, the latest one, if it's 360, like, basically wait an hour. Whenever whenever you upload it, just, like, wait an hour, it gets to 1080. Okay, it was the Paragon. Oh, and it's 1080 right now? Yeah. So, it, it just takes, like, an hour. That's a, that's a thing that just happens. I guess we still have to spark in case of an ember cleave, but we just take a lot of damage. Our deck looked awesome in this match. Uh, my, my opponent did mold a five both times, but they had really good, you know, curves and everything. But my deck looked deck looked really good. All right. So ended up going three and one with Abzan Hero, and we didn't get to face the deck that I really wanted to face. That we kind of, you know, the, our decks really tuned for. With um, Jund at sacrifice, but but yeah, it felt it felt pretty good in the metagame. You know, I liked I liked our Jeskai Fires matchup um, with having four to spark, three Mortify. Like those are really good quality removal spells there, and three Assassin's Trophy also. So I think we had good stuff for Jeskai Fires. Uh, I, I think that we have a lot of good stuff for, like, a Rakdos aggro deck, as we saw with those games. Especially when we add in, like, the extra Legion's End, and then, you know, Archives. Like, we have just a lot of good removal there. The Golgari, Golgari Queens were just all-stars. Golgari Queen looked really, really solid. Um, Blue-Eye Control, that's going to be tough. I, I admit that that's, that's probably a really tough matchup for us. Um, we could... Tristani could be replaced in the sideboard for something that's better against Blue-Eye Control. You know, I don't know, Ceratops or whatever. Whatever is good against blue white control, but yeah, planar cleansing is is really rough. Um, I guess we could have like another duress kind of thing. But yeah, I think I think the worst card in the sideboard is probably the Tristani if you want to replace something there. Um, could replace Citadel as well, but I mean Citadel is, is there for like that for that control matchup to try to play a whole lot of stuff. Um, but then if you just you know play Citadel, play a whole bunch of stuff, and then they planar cleansing, it's Planar, planar cleansing is tough. That's that's a hard card to beat. But Abzan Hero, this deck was sweet. This deck was sweet. Uh, so those of y'all watching on YouTube, uh, make sure to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. Uh, sorry for you know missing out the first five turns of the Jeskai, the first Jeskai Fires matchup. But I hope you liked this deck. I I certainly did. I think there's good interaction for all the creature decks. We are you are going to be behind against Blue Eye Control. But besides that, all the decks that are playing creatures and, and things like that, I think this deck has a lot of very good interaction. Um, anyway, that's Abzan Hero. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.